reps. Well, if I go in and I say, all right, we're going to do work on this particular thing for 25 minutes, and you're going to get as much work in as you can with whatever your, uh, with whatever your rep range protocol is. So if you're doing triples at a nine, I want you to do 25 minutes, get up to a triple at a nine, and kind of stay in that range. If you have to bring weight off the bar and keep doing that, you're going to work for 25 minutes. If it takes you forever to recover in between those, you may only get three or four sets in. But that's as many sets as you needed. If you're feeling awesome and you're like, man, 25 minutes, I got nine sets in, it regulates itself. I've been doing this a lot. Um, if you guys have personal trainer clients, I recommend at least trying this first on yourself to make sure that you understand appropriate time frames for things. It makes training so much easier. If you have a set amount of time to work with someone, Try, instead of saying, this is how many sets we're going to do with this, say, all right, I'm putting 15 minutes on the clock. Here's the clock. You're going to do as many sets as you can handle in that amount of time. That gives them something else to work for. That gives them something else to push past. And it regulates their volume to how they're feeling for that day. So it helps you not push them past their limit. And it helps them not be restricted by your set, your set idea of what you'd like them to do. Like, if I tell someone I want them to do four sets today, um, maybe he's got six sets in him. And I just restricted his ability to, to really improve and get past that point because I had already programmed it in where the time frame allows you to be a little bit more flexible and it's a little more personal. So if you were to ask me, I think it's really a solid way to go as long as you have an understanding of the appropriate amount of time to give to someone. Because you, I mean, then, the, then the variable from becomes how much time should I allow for this to keep it in an understandable um, fashion. Uh, I'm going to run through these last few because I'm not quite as, uh, I don't have quite as much personal experience with them. Block building is the idea, it's submaximal training, and it's instead of working so much on getting my, uh, my highest level higher, where the stars align and I'm peaked for a contest or something, I want to make my 85% next week better than my 85% was this week. It is almost, it's like a really, really, really long accumulation phase um, with a short transmutation and realization phase of block uh, periodization. You're going to work really, really hard and do, you know, months and months and months of this non-specific training, uh, bringing up your general strength, and then you're going to do short periods where you're going to work on the specific movement patterns that you need to work on, and then you're going to do a short realization phase, and that's it. And um, I don't know a whole lot of people who are currently doing it. I think it's not as appealing because you don't get that feeling of like hitting personal records all the time. It's really, really long and drawn out. But in the long run, it does seem to have some pretty good results if you're patient and disciplined. German volume training, this is something Shane wanted me to include. Uh, my understanding of it is generally like 10 by 10 type stuff. High frequency, high volume, super low intensity. You're just getting really good at that movement and you're going to elicit a response from uh, perfection of the motor pattern. Uh, the Bulgarians, um, they do a lot of that high-end, um, super intense, um, lower volume, uh, gym, moderate frequency. And it's kind of the, you know, whenever you have anything that's at the high extreme end of something, you have to really lower the other two to make sure that you're avoiding overtraining. Um, Bro's method. This is an Olympic training, uh, an Olympic lifting technique. Um, John Bros down in Las Vegas, Nevada, has average Bros gym, and they squat to some sort of max every day. They train five to six days a week, multiple times a day, and they will squat either a back squat or a front squat multiple times. Um, difference is it's a high bar squat, the Olympic squat, which is a lot less taxing on your central nervous system because your leverages aren't as optimal. So I can't load as much on myself as I do with the low bar squat, which is really, uh, really going to use a lot of my uh, posterior chain and all those bigger, stronger muscles. It's going to be a lot more um, stretch reflex. Uh, it's more dynamic movement. So they can afford to do that more often. Um, that's for the person who just really loves the squat and uh, he's had some pretty good success with some of his lifters coming out of uh, Las Vegas. That's something to look at. The lift specific programs, I kind of mentioned these. Um, small Lob and Small Lob Junior is generally a squat development program. It is terribly difficult. It is very high volume, very high frequency, very high 
intensity. Um, I've run it a couple of times myself for my squat, and it will, most people just don't make it to the end. Most people won't make it all 12 weeks because you'll either get hurt or overtrained. Um, everything else you're doing has to be kind of committed to that, your recovery and all that, but it does make you a lot better. Small Lob Junior is a lighter version of it, and that is used a lot um, by people on their bench press. Uh, and tends to elicit a pretty good response. Um, you're benching four times a week with that, but you get really good at bench pressing. Uh, the Cohen Flippy is a deadlift routine. Um, that one's available online if you just type in Cohen Flippy, and if you want your deadlift to go up in 10 weeks, um, the first seven weeks of that program are pretty, pretty helpful. After that, it gets a little ridiculous, and you're like, how is anybody supposed to jump uh, these last couple of percents? But that's a pretty well-established thing. Um, Frequency is not very high, but the intensity is pretty high, and it builds up, and that's really a good example of progressive overload over a 10-week period of time. Um, critical bench is has been around for a long time. Uh, lots of pros and cons on it. It's pretty expensive for a bench press only program, and the program that accompanies it that isn't bench pressing is pretty awful. Um, it's it's only designed to increase your bench press and. I would, I would honestly avoid looking into that one too much. Um, but anyway, the takeaways from this, what I hope you guys got is uh, some of the things that you need to keep in mind whenever you're programming for yourself or other people, um, the volume, the frequency, the intensity. You can't be all systems go for a length of time without coming back off of it. And really, really good programs are ones generally that will go through and manipulate those for whatever the training response you're looking for is in the long run. Um, does anybody have any questions? What was the guy's name that you said, like 90% on the reps? Uh, 90% on the Oh, Prelipin. P-R-E-L-I-P-I-N. Well, wait, what? Prelipin. Prelipin. If you just type it into Google, it should come up. It should Prelipin's chart. And that should be a helpful thing. A lot of these programs um, line up pretty well with that, um, unless they're poorly designed. But yeah, thank you guys for listening. I know that I'm not Shane. I may not be as uh, exciting to talk to, but you guys can keep these papers if you want. Um, and uh, yo, what's your record? My record. I uh, as a 220 as a 220 drug test doctor, I squatted 705 and I totaled 1830 uh, without equipment. So I squatted 705, I benched 385, and I deadlifted 740 at that meet. Um, the last meet I did, I pulled 750 with just a belt. And so the the total was a world record across all federations for drug test 220. Um, the old record was 1770, so I totaled 1830 and I broke it by 60 pounds. Um, the squat, I didn't know was a record when I attempted it. I called for 700 pounds, they misloaded it and added five pounds on the bar. And so I squatted it, and I was like, damn, that was heavier than I wanted it to be. And they're like, oh, no, new world record. I'm like, surprise, I would have been so mad if you guys would have, if I would have missed that. So. Cool, I, I don't want to keep you guys any longer. If you have fun places to go and adventures to act, they do. Yeah, I, whatever I have to do.